Hello interwebs, this is Eddie Nashjian coming to you from my not-so-puzzling kitchen where food is riddled with flavor. Today we are going to be looking at pancakes, the thing that made IHOP so popular and so famous in the early 1950s. For this recipe you are going to need 2 cups of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of kosher salt, 2.5 teaspoons of baking powder, 1.5 cups of milk, 2 tablespoons of melted butter, 1 egg, and 2 tablespoons of sugar. Using a fine mesh strainer, combine your flour, salt, baking powder, sugar. I am using shot glasses and prep bowls, I am sorry. Sift that together as if you're trying to find gold in 1950s California. Mix together and set aside to prepare the wet ingredients. Add your butter to your milk, crack an egg into a separate bowl, and then realize that the yolk broke and now you gotta whisk that all together. Pour the butter and milk mixture into said bowl and whisk gently and constantly until it multiplied. Once that's been achieved, add your wet ingredients back to your dry ingredients. Slowly and gently incorporate those until the pancake batter has become homogenous. Alright, now it's time to start making pancakes. We're going to get our griddle preheated to medium heat, get it greased down with Pam, and lay down our first batch of pancakes to about a 4 inch diameter. Flip them after about two minutes or until bubbles come to the surface. Once they're done on the second side, move them off to a plate off camera and review with the rest of the pancake batter. Now this recipe I'm using produced nine pancakes of about four inches in diameter. Walking in on a Dutch tilt, sorry, we are going to start plating up these pancakes. First. I'm going to find the biggest one in this stack that I can find, and I think it's this one right here. And then take another one that's of lesser size, and third, take a knob of salted butter. I can get it out the wrapper, and then dress with maple syrup. I'm sorry if the lighting in this shot was a little crazy. I got a ring light with a tripod and I was trying to figure it out. Anywho, technical know-how aside, we're going to make more pancakes. Same deal as before, flour, salt, baking powder, and sugar. Sift it through, and then mix together and set aside for the wet mix. Same deal as before, crack an egg, break it into a bowl, whisk, add that to your milk, and also add your butter to said milk, and gently stir. We're going to make these pancakes a little bit different, so first we're going to macerate some blueberries, and for that we are going to need, well, blueberries. A third cup of sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, and the juice of a lime. Now combine your sugar with your blueberries along with your cinnamon. Roll a lime on the table that way you can get most of the juice out. Struggle to cut that with your sharpest knife, or what they should be. Uh, squeeze the juice with your hand and then mix. It should come together to look like the consistency you find in blueberry pie filling. After that's been taken care of, we're gonna bake off some bacon and put these in our pancakes because it's adventure time. Grab your friends. To the oven at 350 for 15 to 20 minutes. Take out three slices, slice them into bite-sized pieces. These were very hot, so I just suggest that you let these cool off for a little bit. And keep chopping. And now it's time for final assembly. We're gonna take our wet ingredients, give them a slow cursory mix, add them to our dry mix. Mix slowly and incorporate bacon as follows. You want to make sure that the flour streaks in the pancake batter have mostly disappeared and the bacon is coated in the pancake batter and it's going to be in each of the pancakes throughout. You don't want baconless pancakes that's really dead. Over at the griddle we have it set over to medium heat and we are going to grease it down with the bacon pad that was rendered while roasting. Make sure it's evenly distributed and get ready to sear off our first batch of pancakes in a little zone. Just get under it after two minutes or until bubbles form on the surface. But oh my oh my look at all that brown and rot there. Once they're done cooking on the second side, take them off to a plate on camera, which is supposed to be off camera, and repeat the rest of your pancake batter. Now, batter dispersal for this batch of pancakes was a little bit inconsistent, so I managed to get 12 pancakes of different sizes. Some were mid-sized, some were small, and some were, well, relative to a typical pancake size. Now we've got everything plated up, and it's time to make ourselves a serving. 
This recipe is inspired by an Epicurious Pancake Ingredient Swap video that will be linked below. First, it's going to be a little bit of butter on the plate, then our first pancake, a little bit of our blueberries, and then another pancake, followed by another dollop of our macerated blueberries, and then topped finally with our third pancake. Give it another butter pat on top and drizzle with maple syrup, and enjoy! Thank you.